decisions, decisions. Is it that two people with the same education, background, family make completely different decisions when faced with the same circumstances? How, in fact, do we make decisions at all? We'll be using this picture of the processes of the mind throughout the video to explain what is happening. But you have no need to have seen it before. It is just a pictorial aid. The Three Worlds Our mind can be split into three. The subconscious is at the bottom of the picture. represented symbolically by forests and woods see video our conscious intellectual self can be found in the center represented symbolically by the middle floor in the castle or temple of our mind see video the subconscious and the conscious mind go together and make up the mortal soul. Then, at the very top of the diagram, there is the higher spirit, also known as the immortal soul. See the palaces, kites and crown video. And there, in the very centre of the picture, at the level of the conscious mind, is the direction system, the activity that makes all the decisions. As we can see from the diagram, two sub-activities work together to help us to make a decision, our reasoning ability and the final decision-making activity, our will. Robert Frost, from the poetry of Robert Frost. We disparage reason, but all the time it's what we're most concerned with. There's will as the motor, and there's will as the brakes. Reason is, I suppose, the steering gear. The will as brakes can't stop the will as motor for very long. We're plainly made to go. What inputs are we using to make the decision? There are arrows representing inputs going into the decision-making activity, all coming from yellow boxes that give those inputs a name. So we will explore them one by one. Memories Taking exactly the same diagram, we will now stretch it out a bit so you can see better what is happening. So let us first take the box labelled Memories. Using Memory Recall, we get memories from our memory, that great store of information we build up by learning. We have a video called The Symbolism of Memory and Rooms. And we learn by combining what we already know in our memory with new perceptions. And perceptions, if we trace them back, are a combination of all our sensations together with the emotion we felt at the time. So already we can see that no two people are ever going to have exactly the same experience or memory of an event. Because of what they already believe, 
and the state of their sensory systems. And we explore this more in our video on reality. Perceptions and Emotions Perceptions are not only used to learn, they are the impetus, the driving force of decision-making. And those perceptions contain all the emotions we feel at the time. And emotions play a very, very significant part in which way we go. In our video, Finding Your Way Around Our Website, Part 4, Activities, about five minutes into the video, we've included some explanation of the findings of the Nobel Prize winner, Henry Bergson, on emotions, which is very pertinent to this. Robert Frost, from the poetry of Robert Frost. Two roads diverged in a yellow wood, and sorry I could not travel both, and be one traveller. Long I stood, and looked down one as far as I could, to where it bent in the undergrowth, then took the other, as just as fair, and having perhaps the better claim, because it was grassy, and wanted wear, though as for that, the passing there, had worn them about the same, and both that morning equally lay in leaves no step had trodden black. Oh, I kept the first for another day, yet knowing how way leads on to way, I doubted if I should ever come back. I shall be telling this with a sigh, somewhere ages and ages hence, two roads diverged in the wood, and I, I took the one less travelled by, and that has made all the difference. Objectives What else is used to make a decision? Well, the next input we use is our objectives. What we want to do and what we have to do. The, the caption says, The new man is found increasingly in the kitchen. John Keats, Letter, March 1819 The greater part of men make their way with the same instinctiveness, the same unwandering eye from their purposes, the same animal eagerness as the hawk. I go among the fields, and catch a glimpse of a stoat or a field mouse peeping out of the withered grass. The creature hath a purpose, and its eyes are bright with it. I go amongst the buildings of a city, and I see a man hurrying along. To what? The creature has a purpose, and his eyes are bright with it. Personality The final input in the decision-making process is that of the personality, and we have a video on personality and the mask. And the ego. How strong the sense of I am is in the person. And we have an example of a very big I am in the example of the symbol of the pheasant. See video. The opposite of genuine humility. So even if all the sensory information seems to be just the same for everyone, there are a great number of other inputs we don't know about. The memories, the personality, the size of the ego, the emotions the event creates, and the quality and accuracy of the perceptions. But there's also another input that is entirely invisible to anyone else but the person, but which may prove the most influential and beneficial of all, and that is spirit input. And to see this, 
we need to go back to our other diagram. Spirit Input Spirit Input is created by our higher spirit, put into an intelligible state by one of its subfunctions, composition, the composer, and received by our subconscious, perceive, follow the blue wavy line. But because our subconscious receives it, we only know of it if all the other functions, the emotions, the desires and obligations, the memory, the sensory systems, and the ego are stilled, made quiet and peaceful. And a meditation pod is as good as a warm bath by candlelight. It is good as a sensory deprivation pod and so on. And the moral is? Decisions are better when we are connected to our higher spirit. Giving advice to others rather than just stating your point of view and why you have it is the last thing anyone should be doing.